We ask that we wouldn't miss out on you when that time comes, but we also ask that we wouldn't miss out on you today and tomorrow and next week as you come into our midst and invite us to join you in what you're doing. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, as I mentioned in the little introduction, just some background on, so where do these readings come from that we use in the Lutheran Church? It comes from a lectionary, which is three, three year cycles of readings. But within those cycles, there's something each year called the church calendar. So I want to see how informed you are on the church calendar. When does the church calendar begin? Advent. Advent, Advent yes, good answer. So that's going to be here at the beginning of, Jan or beginning of December. So we're going to focus in Advent on preparing for the coming of Jesus. But the end of the church year, at the end of November, is Christ the King Sunday. And that's where we focus on Him coming again. And the readings that come through those weeks before and into Christ the King Sunday come from Matthew 25. And the focus of all those readings is, are you ready? Are you ready for Him when He comes? That's what we're going to talk about today. Now, I used to think that the whole point of the, of the Christian life was just to play it safe and avoid making mistakes so that I wouldn't disqualify myself from being taken away when He came again. But the more I read what the Bible says, I don't think that's really the main purpose of being ready. Because if we're in Christ, we know that He will come and take us to be with Him. That's not a place where we need to put our anxiety. The more I look at what the Bible says, the more I think, well, now it's, how, how are we ready to recognize Him today? How are we ready to hear His voice today? And as we get used to hearing God's voice today and following Jesus today, it's not a question of whether we'll be ready when He comes again. Because we'll be used to seeing Him, we'll be used to hearing His voice, and it just makes sense. Now it's time to go. It's not like we wait to go to heaven so we can meet Him for the first time. But we get used to Him in this life, so that when He comes again, it's just sort of a continuation of that relationship that we've begun here. So there's three stories. Today, we're focusing on the story of the bridegroom. Next week we'll focus on the talents that are given to the three servants. And then two weeks from today we're going to focus on the parable of the sheep and the goats. And really all of them give different aspects of being ready. Not just to be taken when that time comes, but to be engaged with what God is up to now as well. So we're ready both for then and for now. So today, the bridegroom. The bridegroom parable. Any moment, and actually the more that I've been reading, the more that I see that even today, if you go with Middle Eastern culture, the, cult, the customs haven't changed a whole lot. But you're still just as likely to see this scenario happen, where the bridegroom will come, and it's a whole community celebration. That it wasn't like the bride and groom had a quick ceremony and then went away on a honeymoon. But it was... The whole community came together to celebrate, and they would spend the whole week at the bride and groom's house celebrating, just uh, treating them like a prince and a princess. And it would just be enjoying the presence of the bride and the groom, enjoying the community. And if you missed out on it, you were missing the main thing that was happening in the community that week. So you didn't want to miss out. But because it was such a big thing, and they wanted the whole community to stay focused on celebrating, it wasn't uncommon for the bridegroom to come at an odd time, just to see if, ever, see if he could catch them off guard on the way to the ceremony. But there was something where the bridegroom would always send one of his groomsmen ahead. So it wasn't like he just showed up. He always gave him a little bit of warning, saying, get ready, the bridegroom is right behind me. We've got to be ready to go. So that's what happens this, in this story, a very typical wedding ceremony, where the bridegroom says, hey, well, let's try to catch people off guard, but I'll come at midnight. So the bridegroom is coming in, and the groomsman has announced he's coming, get ready. And then we've got the, <coughs> the bridesmaids. Some of them are prepared, and some of them aren't prepared. And as I've been reading this week more about the, the context of this, that, so I was thinking, well, why don't the ones without the lamps just walk with the ones with the lamps, and then they can all get there? But as I've been reading, there's some of the, the regulations in the villages were that you can't go out at midnight unless you've got your own lamp to light your way. So it was like against the rules for them to be able to follow because they didn't have a functional lamp. 
So they had to wait, they had to go and get their lamp, and by the time they got their oil for their lamp, it was too late to get in, and they missed out. They missed out on a whole, the whole week of celebration. They missed out on what was happening with the bridegroom and the bride. So with that in mind, how do we, like I said, it's not just being ready to go and celebrate with God when this life is over, but it's how do we avoid missing out on what Jesus, what Jesus is up to, spending the whole week with Him now? How do we make sure we don't miss out on being with Him wherever He is? So, what makes you ready to hear His voice? The voice of, maybe the voice of the, the groomsman who is going to get your attention. What are some ways that we can tune our ears to hear God's voice so that we don't miss what God's up to? What's one thing? Maybe there's something we could do like a 20-week series on, having people explore something. What's one way that we can tune our ears to hear what God is saying? Be quiet. To read the Bible, yeah. We're going to be reading the Bible, so we're going to, that's one way. That as you read the Bible, you just you, it tunes you to be ready to hear the kinds of things God would be saying. Uh, God's priorities, God's heart. What's another way that we can prepare our ears to hear what, so we hear when that announcement is made that he's coming? Prayer. Be quiet. Prayer, yes, be quiet. Prayer. So the one thing that we'll do is take some time to focus on prayer. That we will begin this 20 weeks of the Bible study, and then as we get into January, we're going to invite people to try out being in some small groups where you get together with people and you pray. And where the third thing that I want to say, ways to keep your ears open, is Christian fellowship. That often we might miss things, but the person next to us can help us to hear. So some things, reading the Bible, praying, being together with other Christians who help us to hear the voice that maybe we might not hear ourselves. So that's how we hear the voice. But So it's good to have our ears open. But you also, if the bridegroom is coming through the village to get your attention to have you follow, don't you want to be at some point in the village, some place in the village that he's likely to pass? You don't want to be at the other end of the village and completely miss out on the announcement. So, so today's reading and the readings ahead help us to get the understanding of where he might be passing. And where might he be passing? Do you think that we, he might just be waiting for the people who are sitting in their, in their houses just focusing on themselves? Or do you think that Jesus might be passing through areas where there are people who are, are in need of love, people who are in need of prayer, people who are in need of, of healing? As we focus on the story of the sheep and the goats, Jesus says, you know what? You completely missed out on me to this whole group because you were just focused on yourself. You weren't out there caring for people who, the poor, the, the hungry, the ones who were sick, the ones who were in prison. So maybe that could be a way that we can um, put ourselves along the path that the bridegroom will likely to pass as we go through town. Not by focusing on ourselves, but being engaged. Being engaged in loving our neighbor and serving our neighbor. That's likely to put us in a place where Jesus is going to pass and get our attention in ways that we won't be positioned if we're just taking care of ourselves off on our own. So we hear the voice. We train our ears through reading the Bible, through praying, through Christian fellowship. We make sure we're along the path by being engaged, loving our neighbor, serving our neighbor. But when we hear and it's ready to follow, how do we have that oil for our lamp so that we can go more deeply into what Jesus is doing? And as I think about, um, Jesus teaches a lot about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is where his, he is actively involved, where God's act, action is happening. So when I picture being prepared for Jesus coming to get our attention, I sort of look at that as the same as how do you get involved in the kingdom of God? How are you in the middle of, of heaven's activity on earth? And so some things of how, how you have oil in your lamp to follow. In the Bible, oil often refers to the Holy Spirit. So we could do all the Bible reading and all of the focus and all the nice community service stuff and still not really be able to enter fully into what God's doing if we're just doing it on our own strength. So to have the oil to follow, part of being prepared is each day saying, God, fill me afresh with your spirit. God, help me to be filled with your love and your courage and help me to be aware of what you're saying and where you're leading. So 
We practice hearing his voice. We, we we place ourselves where he will be passing. And then we ask for God's spirit to help us to be able to follow. Because Jesus is going to say, you can't even see the kingdom of God without being born from above. What helps you to see the kingdom is by God bringing you into that relationship. And you can't enter into the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. So Jesus is saying, no matter how religious you are or how much Bible you study, you're not going to be able to fully follow Jesus unless the Spirit is in you and the Spirit's leading you and empowering you. And that's something that I was thinking about during this past week during my devotions, is how do we, how are we equipped to more fully enter into the kingdom? And I was starting to think about how do we normally have our attention drawn to things just in day-to-day -day life? That some of us are sensitive in different ways. That some of us might engage in life most through what we hear. We hear something's going on, so we go and join it. Some of us might engage in life by what we see. That we just tend to be aware of what's going on visually. And we, oh, there's something there, I'm going to go join it. And some of us might tend to engage in life because we're close enough physically with other people that we realize when something's happening and we follow along because we're close physically. So I want to invite you to think this week, invite you to take some time to pray is about, about how you can be more able to follow the bridegroom when he calls you. And I want you to be thinking about which way are you most engaged with the world? Is it through your ears, through your eyes, through touch? And then pray that the Spirit would fill you afresh and activate you to be able to see in the kingdom and hear in the kingdom and to feel in the kingdom. And uh, so, because lots of times we might be people who hear things, but spiritually we don't hear what God wants us to hear. We don't hear God's voice saying, go and talk to that person. Go and pray for that person. Go visit that person. So pray for the Spirit to open your ears to hear His voice so that you don't miss out on what he's calling you to do. Or maybe, if you're someone who's more visual, to pray, God, help me to see things that I tend to have blinders on and walk past. Help me to see that person at work. Help me to see that neighbor. Help me to see that opportunity to invite someone to church that I normally wouldn't see. Or for some, maybe you're, you engage with the world more through touch, that you just are, stay close to people, and that when the, when that person you're with moves, you move with them because you just want to enjoy their presence. So and I'm discovering me for myself, that is actually one way that I'm, I probably more sense God than even through my ears and through my eyes. I'm discovering that just physically sensing God's presence. And you just know God just sort of sent, gets your attention, that there's something going on and, and wakes you up. So maybe you need to just take some time to pray, God, which way do you want me? Or maybe all three of those ways. That how can you get my attention this week? So, Holy Spirit, fill me so that I can hear what you're saying. Open my eyes so I can see your kingdom. See where you're drawing me to go. Or just attune my body to just sense your presence. So that when you're close, I know that I need to be paying attention to what's going on. So, some things to think about. Yes, if you're in Christ, you will be taken away. You know where you're going. So now the question isn't so much, how are we ready for him to take us away? But now the question is, how are we ready for him to grab a hold of us and engage us in this life? Are you keeping your ears open through the Bible, through prayer, through fellowship? Are you in the right place? Are you going to be someplace where you're likely to encounter Jesus by taking the risk of loving and serving your neighbor? And are you asking God's Spirit to open your ears to hear things you wouldn't hear otherwise and see things you wouldn't pay attention to and to sense God's presence and activity in ways that you wouldn't otherwise? My prayer for you is that, not that if He comes, but He is going to come. He's going to pass this way today and tomorrow and next week. And my prayer is that you will hear His voice and that you will follow and that you will experience, not, don't wait till the party, till after this life is over, but to realize that much of the, the party is being in the midst of what the community of God is up to today. That you're there for the whole week. You experience him today and tomorrow and, and the whole week ahead because you didn't miss his voice and you weren't lacking in that oil to follow. Amen.